Scott Daru, Dean of the Ross School of Business. Scott, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, we are sitting in the 710 East, the new 710 East coffee shop powered by Zingerman's Coffee. And if you haven't checked it out, it's awesome. The entrance is off of East University. So when you're in town or if you live in town, come check it out. And Scott and I have known each other for a long time, and I begged him. No, I didn't have to beg. He offered so nicely to be on the podcast. And Scott is well known for being in a, 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 the, the dean of the Ross School of Business, uh, also a uh, well-known professor in, in the area of leadership. But what many people don't know is that Scott is an avid climber. And we're not talking like hikes up, you know, this, this trail or that trail. We're talking about Scott has summited sev six of the t seven summits, seven right. peaks, uh, and other than Everest, I don't know any of them. So, Scott, tell us what are the seven summits and which one is the one that you have left to climb? So, seven summits are the tallest uh, mountain on each of the seven continents. Okay, got it right. So, North America would be Denali or McKinley okay. up in Alaska. Uh, and South America would be on the border of Argentina and Chile, a mountain called Aconcagua. Okay. Uh, I'm glad then, I didn't try that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, then in Africa, you got Mount Kilimanjaro, yep. which a lot of people uh, know. In Europe... Uh, you have a mountain in southern Russia right on the Georgian border called Mount Elbrus. Okay. Uh, then Asia would be um, Mount Everest, yep. uh, the tallest mountain in the world. Uh, Antarctica uh, would be Mount Vinson, oh, okay. uh, which is a, a beautiful, uh, just magical place. Okay. Uh, and then the, the seventh, which I have not done. Uh, is the Oceanic Continent, so okay. Australia and all those South Pacific islands. Got it. Uh, and there's a, a little island off the coast of Indonesia uh, that has a mountain on it called Karsten's Pyramid. It's a great name. Uh, great name for a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, super excited. Uh, two of my friends and I are going to go in March uh, of 2020 and uh, climb Karsten's. Yeah. And if uh, the stars align and the weather cooperates, uh, after March, we will have completed the seven summits. Knocking on wood on that one. And and what what, what does that club look like that is the, the the people that have climbed seven summits? How, how big is that club? Yeah, we're talking hundreds, not not thousands. That's amazing. Uh, and, uh, and certainly it would be a, an honor to be a, among that uh, group of adventurers and explorers. 100%. And, and folks that really challenge themselves. And there's even a, there's a, there's even a smaller club uh, of folks that have done the Explorer's Grand Slam, which is the seven summits and the two poles, oh. North and South Pole, and had the privilege of, uh, of uh, visiting the South Pole I remember uh, that. recently. And uh, if the ice doesn't melt uh, with the <laughs> North Pole, maybe we'll visit that sometime soon, or maybe we'll just swim there. Who knows? <laughs> it still counts, if I think, if you swim there. Uh, yes, yeah. as, as long as you hit that GPS coordinate, right. you're good. All right, that's fair. All right, that sounds good. So I, and I, you know, knowing this about you, I thought it would be, you know, I, you can tell hundreds of stories about business and your experiences there, but I really wanted you to tell a couple stories uh, lessons learned, life lessons from your experiences climbing. So I was wondering if you would uh, would would talk about that. Sure. Uh, so I got into mountaineering because I was fascinated with the group aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, imagine tying a group of people who often don't know each other, tying them together with a rope and saying, go climb that very dangerous mountain together. <laughs> yeah. How do you build trust? How do you communicate? How do you make decisions? Everything that we study about leadership and teamwork and business and yeah. organizations, it plays out in this really intense environment on mountains. And so I've always just been fascinated by that, and that's why I originally got in involved. Um, so I'll give you two. Uh, people are generally fascinated by Everest, tallest mountain in the world, and it makes the news yeah, every every yeah. spring. It's and, the one people know. Exactly. And so, so I'll give you a couple of stories uh, from that experience um, that taught me a lot uh, that I consider sort of these deep, profound life lessons, at least mm -hmm. for me. Um, so the first is really about strength and vulnerability. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, you know, mountaineering attracts a certain type of person. It's often somebody that's really achievement oriented. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what some people may call like type A yep, sort type of a. folks. Overachiever. Uh, type. Overachiever yep. type of person, right? And But it's also interesting because it also attracts people that are often quite humble uh, and folks that understand that the mountain's bigger than them and mm -hmm. uh, you're there for the experience and the right. journey. And so it's this interesting mix. And so you find people that are um, really transparent and vulnerable and you find people who aren't. Uh, and we were, we were, um, uh, about 24, 25,000 feet, uh, above sea level on, on Everest, uh, around camp three. Uh, and it's on this, 
uh, face called the Lotzi face that's really steep, okay. really dangerous. If you fall, really bad things happen. Got it. Uh, and um, it was cold. It was really cold. I mean, we live in Michigan. It can be cold here. Right. Uh, it was one of the coldest days I've I've had in my life. Crazy. And you've got these boots on that are unbelievable at keeping your feet warm. And my feet were so cold. <laughs> Uh, I was convinced my toes were, were going to fall off. And you were at camp three. So where does that, for people that don't know, you know, how, where, how far, how many camps are there? So there are, there's base camp and then four camps, Got base it. camp, camp one, two, three, four, and then the summit. And the mountain's a little over 29,000 feet. And so camp three, depending on where you're at a little above or a little below it, let's call it in that 23, 24, 20, you know, 25,000, uh, sort of range. Um, there's not a lot of air up there, put it that way. Right. Got it. You're getting close to the, you're getting close to the summit. It's, it's, it's real at that point. Got it. Uh, and you gotta, you still have a long ways to go, but it's real. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the dangers are, are, you know, uh, they're in the foreground of right. your, of your, of your mind. Yeah. Um, and so my feet were really, really cold and I was climbing behind our lead guide, Garrett Madison, uh, dear friend, exceptional climber, mm. uh, probably arguably one, uh, the world's best big mountain guide. Uh, and, um, Garrett and I know each other. We trust each other. We've climbed, uh, with each other a number of times. And I, I, I yelled out to him. I said, Garrett, my, my feet are really cold. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, and, and his response to me, I'll never forget. He's like, mine are too. <laughs> and Rishi, I don't know if his feet were cold or not. I actually speculate that it, they weren't. He was, he, would, he, he was fine. He was fine. Yeah. But he was likely showing empathy with me. Right. And he said, Scott, if they stop hurting, tell me, because then we have a problem. Oh, interesting. And so that gave me some reassurance. And it, it, it told me that I wasn't alone because presumably his feet were cold too. Right. And we were going to get through this together. Right. But that vulnerability comes with risk yeah. because if he's very conservative, say inexperienced, he could turn me around. Yeah. And stop my summit bid. Right. And I've spent a lot of money to be there, a lot of time training, a lot yeah. of energy, et cetera. Uh, and so there's a level of trust that, that's required there to be expose yourself in some sense and be vulnerable to that other person. But that's what it is about building a team. Right. Right. Is I've got to be vulnerable to you and trust you, right. knowing that you're going to be vulnerable back to me and trust me as well. And I'll contrast that with a team that had a friend of mine on it that was climbing uh, a couple of days behind us. And basically at the same point on the mountain, uh, a little above, um, his feet started getting cold as well. And he wouldn't tell his guide because he was afraid his guide was going to turn him around. Didn't have the trust. Didn't have the trust. And uh, played that out. And then, you know, a day or so later, they're on their way to the summit. They get to the summit. Uh, and this is after we had summited and come back down. And um, he gets to the summit and he can't walk. Oh, wow. And at that point, he's put his entire team at risk. Right. And it all dates back to this, uh, traces back to this idea that he couldn't tell his guide yes. that he was struggling. Right. And now his entire team's got to rally to get him down safely. Unfortunately, they did. But, um, you know, his feet were black with frostbite. Wow. All because he wasn't willing to be vulnerable to his leadership, if you will, or his team. Right. And so it really taught me the power and vulnerability and the importance of trust. We all know trust is important. Right. But it's one I, thing to say it, but that's how you actually act on it. Right? And, and I mean, if you look at definitions of trust, the most commonly word used to describe it is vulnerability. Right. And if, we're, if, if, and I know in the leadership positions I'm in, if I want to build trust in my team, the way to do that is to be vulnerable. Right. And I'll never forget that lesson. That's a, that's an amazing story. And, and a practical application when you, and you're just talking about trust, like, oh yeah, I trust, I trust, I trust you, or you got to trust your team, but that's life and death right there, or limb, life and limb. Yeah, that's happened, right, right, yeah. that's right. Um, and, uh, you know, another one that I'll never forget, uh, same mountain on Everest. Uh, most people, when they think about their goals on Everest, uh, what do you think the most common goal is for climbing Everest? Got to get to the top. I got to get to the top. Got to get to the top. Right, yeah. and, and that's what people want to be able to take the picture and right. send it to their family. And Post it on Instagram right away. Precisely, right? <laughs> do and they get cell service at the top of Everest? It, to they do, actually. Oh, they do. Oh, that's great. Uh, and so now, nowadays, you can call people and text people from the summits <laughs> and, and whatnot. But That's funny. Um, that wasn't my goal. My goal is to get to the top and back down safely. Oh, you know, I mean, right. you, I mean, you know, Kathy, my wife, yeah. she and I have a deal, right? <laughs> I'm coming back and I'm coming back with my limbs, my toes, my right. fingers, et yes. cetera. 
and no mountain is more important than than that right right so your goal can't just be the top you have to make it all the way back down absolutely right. and and getting down is actually more difficult more technically challenging and it's also because people get complacent mm -hmm. right because they get to the top and they think they've accomplished their goal right and they let their guard down right and so i've got a great video uh from the summit from our gopro cameras on our on our helmets yeah and the wind's blowing, but it's clear. You can see forever, and you can hear the voices. Yeah. And um, uh, one of my teammates goes, we did it. We accomplished our goal. And you hear me in the background saying, no, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> We're only halfway there. Way to be the downer. <laughs> and, uh, and, but that's important because it, it emphasizes uh, focus. Yeah. Right? And keeping your eye on the prize, keeping right. your eye on the goal. And, uh, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell a, a related story that brings that to life as to why that's so important. So we summited on May 18th, okay. uh, 2013. Um, the most memorable day for me of that entire trip is not May 18th. It's May 19th hmm. on our way down. One of our team members, um, who's an unbelievable climber, uh, became one of uh, the first 10 or so people in history to climb two 8,000 meter peaks within 24 hours. Oh, wow. He, so we summited Everest. We came back down to camp four. He went to sleep, slept for a few hours, and then got up and went and climbed Lhotse, the adjacent mountain, all within 24 hours. Oh, wow. And on our way down, he um, uh, got complacent and uh, made some gear choices. And, um, and on our way down, he ended up um, uh, slipping and falling. And because of the gear choices that he had made, in particular his gloves, as soon as you fall, you grab the rope. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't have the right gloves on. And it burned through the, the gloves and burned through his hands. Oh, and then wow. you let go. And he actually slid a good part of the way down the, the Lhotse face, wow. which is really dangerous. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and he's fine. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, we were very lucky. Yeah. Uh, and it was very scary. Yeah. Um, but, um, it really taught me the importance of having a clear goal mm -hmm. and staying focused on that goal yeah. until the end right. and not allowing the team uh, to really trick itself into thinking that it's, it's achieved something special before right. it really has. Right. It's, it's about picking the right goal because if your goal is short sighted, you actually end up not achieving the, the ultimate goal. Right. That's right. So, uh, no, that's that's a really interesting story. And I think it's awesome how, and, and probably you're in the moment of climbing and this is just all happening. And then you come back and reflect on it a month later, a week later, a month later, a year later. And you're like, oh, wow, like that's absolutely corollary to what I'm dealing with now or absolutely, you know, uh, something I can tell someone about setting the right goal or, or, or trust in general, right? And that, I, I think it's cool because it, it, it's, uh, it, 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 um, brings these things to light in a way that you wouldn't normally see. A hundred percent. I mean, every day here at the University of Michigan, something happens in terms of group dynamics yeah. or leadership or so forth. And there's a thought that runs through my mind yeah. of, I've seen that on some mountain somewhere. Right, right, right. And I'm sure my team gets, I don't use these stories often, but I'm sure every time I do, they're like, here we go again, <laughs> right? Um, but it's so powerful and vivid. Yeah. It brings it to life in a way that people, I think, can resonate with. Well, w when you're six or seven and about to hit the club, like, you get to tell those stories. That's, <laughs> that's, there's a whole podcast there. Like, you could start your own, po your own podcast on, that, on those stories, which is well worth it. Yeah, sure. I, I, I tend to be in the category of uh, uh, hopefully at least on the, the more uh, humble side of, <laughs> of that equation. Yeah, and, for sure. And, you know, when people are, are interested in the stories, I'm more than happy to, to, to talk about them. But for me, it's never been, there's a great quote in climbing about what do you climb for? Mm -hmm. um, do you climb to plant your flag on top of the mountain and have everybody see it? Right. Or do you climb essentially for the experience of the journey mm -hmm. uh, and the meaning uh, that's behind it? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm definitely in that latter category. I mean, it's it's life changing. It's 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 humbling. Um, but I just love climbing and experiencing these moments yeah. with very special people. Yeah, that's well put, well said. So, well, thanks so much for coming on. And and as you uh, achieve these, some of these goals, maybe we'll have you back on to tell some more stories. Would love to. Good to see you. Thank thanks, you, buddy. Thank you.